Hello everyone. Today I'm doing a video that I do every single year and it is one of my most favorite videos to do and it is looking back on my garden and going over every single thing I'm growing and figuring out what will I grow again in my garden next year and what will I not go ahead and grow in my garden next year and then throwing some maybes in there that I still need to make a decision on. But even though we still have at least probably a couple months left in the growing season here, I have been with my plants long enough to know if it's worth having again in my garden next year. Because I have such a small space to garden, even though I am getting some more space probably next year, it's still considered a relatively small space. I mean, each deck is a little bit under 20 by 20 square feet. So I have to pare down what I'm growing and I really just focus on the things that I love that also do well for me. Although sometimes I love some things enough that even if they don't always do well, I still save some space for them. But I will say before I start my list, this is going to focus on annuals because if I have perennials, the assumption is I want to continue growing them year after year as long as they survive the winter out here. And again, I'm going to do a bunch of videos on how I overwinter the different perennials in my garden. However, there is one exception, which I have mentioned before, that I will go over when I get to the will nots. So let's go ahead and start with the plants that I 100% will be growing in my garden somewhere next year. Now I'm going to start with my tried and true. These are plants that I've been growing probably since the first year we started gardening here in 2020 and I just love them so much that I have to keep having them in my garden. Number one, these aren't necessarily in order, but the one I am very happy with most of the time is Gomfrina. Not only do I love it to dry, it looks really pretty. It lasts, I mean, even after last frost when the plant starts to die, the way it dries down where it looks almost as it does when it's alive. It's still really pretty in the garden, but also they have given me no issues, no pest issues, no disease issues. I can't even remember a year having them in my garden where I've had an issue with them. So Gumfrina will definitely be in my garden as long as I am gardening. Now I did attempt to grow a bunch of different colors this year, more than I've ever grown before but I don't know if it was a seed mix up or what, but I ended up with a lot of the same rose color gumfrina. I do have some others, but that's the one that I have the most of in the garden. So next year, I am gonna try again to continue adding more colors. My goal will be to grow every single gumfrina variety, at least at some point in my garden. Next are my dahlias, specifically dinner plate, because I love those the most, both for the height that they add to my garden and just the size of the beautiful flower. These are the flowers that people are most surprised I'm actually growing in my garden. I just think they look almost so exceptional that you think, how can that just grow in a pot? But it does. So I grow most of my dahlias in seven gallon grow bags, one dinner plate dahlia per seven gallon grow bag. And that works really well. Now the ones that don't have a fungal issue, I do overwinter those tubers, so that will be my plan, but I also get new tubers every spring. I would say if I had to pick like one variety that's done the best for me, probably Otto's Thrill. It just produces, well, one, I love the pink color, but it also produces so many blooms. A lot of my dahlias produce a ton, but I feel like that one just is the most productive of all of the dahlias in my garden, but I still love them. And I do have decorative dahlias as well, but they are usually more tucked into my border, which I still love them, but there's just something so magnificent about the dinner plate dahlias. So I will always have them in my garden, even if I do have disease issues, which I feel like I've had more disease issues this year than I normally do, but I love them enough that they will definitely be staying. Another plant I absolutely love and will be in the garden, even though, again, I had more issues with it than I normally do are zinnias. They are just so productive in my garden. They make up the majority of the bouquets, whether it's bouquets for myself inside or the giveaway bouquets. They come in so many different varieties and colors. I just love them so, so much. Now this year was really bad for powdery mildew. I'm going to adjust some things next year. So I'm gonna to try to stay more on top of prevention, knowing that the powdery mildew could come a lot earlier than it normally does. I'm also going to grow fewer. I think famous last words in gardening, but I'm 
don't want to have as many as I did this year so that if powdery mildew does come, it doesn't wipe out as large of a part of my garden. At least that is my plan. Now I am still going to grow some of my favorite varieties like the queen lime series. I'm going to definitely get more from Florette and grow those as well, but I am also going to add more powdery mildew resistant varieties. So the two that I know of Oklahoma zinnias, which I have grown in the past, I didn't love the shape of them as much as others, but if they won't die from powdery mildew, they are welcome back to my garden. And then also the Zahara series, which I've never grown before. So I do plan to get some of those seeds. So still doing zinnias, potentially fewer zinnias, and adding some more varieties that are powdery mildew resistant. Next on my list for definitely growing again next year are my China asters. I love them so much. They are so pretty and I would say they're probably one of the more unique flower types that I grow, especially the ones like the Hazaster Hagen Light Blue, where it just has very unique flowers on them. So I love them. I'm going to be growing most of the ones I grew this year. I'm also going to be growing some new varieties next year as well. And I already got the seeds for them because I have a problem where I like to plan way too early. So I already have the seeds of the ones that I didn't grow that I ordered from Johnny Seed inside that I won't be starting until probably around early April next year, maybe mid-March. Next on my definitely growing list are, if you can see in the corner there, my super tunias. These are another tried and true. I got the super tunia vista bubblegum back in 2019. I planted three, I think, in a pretty large pot and I've been in love ever since. Now I do get budworms and I have said that super tunia vistas are the petunias I love enough to make it worth battling the budworms. Now this year I did have budworms, but I actually didn't spray at all. So the budworms did eat a bunch of the blooms and then I cut them back, gave them a bloom boosting fertilizer and they are back and full. So I might just not spray and kind of let mother nature run its course with my petunias. But even with the pest issues that I have, they are still worth it. What I love about these, so these I don't start from seed. I think everything else, I mean, the dahlias are the tubers. I think everything else I mentioned, I do start from seed, but these I get as plants because they put immediate bright color into your garden. And you can see again here and in the photos and videos that I'll post, that it's more colorful flowers than you see the leaves. Again, until the budworms eat the flowers, but it's just immediate bright color. When I first planted them in my garden, maybe mid-May, a lot of the plants I started from seed had not flowered yet. So it was a lot of green and those were giving me the bright colors that I love in my garden. Another one I'm definitely growing and going to attempt to grow some more varieties of are my Cosmos. So I've grown Cosmos for the last few years. I thought last year, I was gonna give up. In fact, on my list of will and won't grow from last year, they were probably in the maybe category. I don't know if I put them in the won't and then just ignored myself. But last year, what happened is that I planted three Cosmos all in the same raised bed. One died right away. One kind of flowered like it normally would and the other just grew huge and didn't flower. And again, they all had the same treatment because they were in the exact same container, but they just didn't do as well for me. And again, smaller space. I want to have plants in my garden that are doing well. However, this year they've done great. So not only am I going to grow the Cupcakes Blush Cosmos again, I'm also going to try some white varieties as well. Now I'm going to go into some new for me this year varieties that I am definitely growing again. That I've just fallen in love with. And first are Impatience. I, I always knew that Impatience did you know, well, but I don't think I ever grew varieties that I truly loved. I am just in love with them this year, specifically the Orchid Blush. They are so full of color. They didn't love it when it was super hot, but they have enjoyed the temperatures when they are, you know, like below 90 degrees, but they are just incredible. They add so much color to the garden. Again, pretty low maintenance for me. I haven't had any pest or disease issues, so I'm 100% adding more impatience. I don't know if I'll add a lot of new varieties or if I'll just kind of stick to the ones that I've fallen in love with this year, but we'll see. I'll probably add some new varieties. Another new one for me that I've fallen in love with is the Black Eyed Susan Vine. So I have the Coconut Appeal variety, which is white flowers with black centers. I love this plant. I like climbing plants. Again, vertical gardening in small spaces is a great space saver. And these are just beautiful. I like the density of the leaf canopy and also it flowers pretty easily for me. If yours isn't flowering, 
I've been told just give it more sun. Both of the places where I have it, it does get full sun. One's more in the morning, one's more in the afternoon, evening, and they are both doing fantastic. Now, I probably put too many in a small pot. I think I did two in each pot. I could probably just do one um, because they do dry out a lot faster than my other larger pots. But other than that, again, no pest issues, no disease issues. The leaves are staying pretty green and healthy, even as I have gotten a little bit off of my fertilizing schedule. And I'm comparing this to a lot of the issues I find with morning glory that I will get to in another section of this video. Another new one for me that I've fallen absolutely in love with is Angelonia. And I'm growing the Cascade Pink. I'd never grown it before. I don't know if I'd ever really like given it much thought in general, but I got some sent to me from Proven Winners and I think it's the Cascade Pink is the variety I have. I'm in love. Again, really low maintenance color that lasts throughout the entire season. My plants have never not had flowers on them. And it's a shape, a growth habit that I don't have a lot of where it also, it grows vertically, but also kind of to the side. So it fills out spaces in my garden really nicely. And I'm just absolutely in love with it. This is probably one where I will add more colors of it to my garden next year. Definitely keeping the Cascade Pink because I love it. Maybe try some white varieties as well because I will be adding some more white flowers to my garden. But I'm absolutely in love with this one. So it's 100% going to be in my garden next year. Now I know I've talked about a lot of flowers. I am still in my flower era of gardening. I started with more vegetables when I first had my garden and then I just fell in love with all of the flowers and the different varieties that you can get. So I do think I'm still gonna be more flower heavy as I go into next year, but my must have vegetables are definitely cherry tomatoes. Those always do really, really well for me. I can get so much from one plant. I have two this year and then the other tomato I had was beefsteak, but I might add some more cherry tomatoes, but smaller varieties. I think it's called Tom Thumb that I have some seeds of. So I'll probably still have two indeterminate cherry tomato varieties and then some dwarf cherry tomato varieties like interspersed throughout my garden. So I'm really excited about that. I think that's gonna be something for the garage deck, um, kind of like a little kitchen garden down there. So that's gonna be fantastic. Um, I will 100% be growing peppers again because I really love them specifically. I grow sweet peppers. I've grown jalapeno peppers in the past. I just don't use them enough. I don't use them enough where it makes sense to give space to a plant versus just getting some from the grocery store. So those I will definitely be growing. All of my herbs I will be growing again as well. In fact, I don't think there's any that I won't grow because I have, again, narrowed it down so much to the herbs that I really love, that I really use. So I had eight different mint varieties. I might have nine next year, I don't know, we'll see how it goes, but all of the mints that I grow, all of the herbs that I grow really, over the last few years, I've kind of excluded or removed the ones that I find I don't actually use that often and just added more of the herbs that I do. And I know 100% I will have more herbs planted, again, mostly on the garage deck than I do have this year. So that will be fun. I will also continue to do my cool season crops, my beets, my radishes. I'm giving broccoli another try this year. Those are a little bit different in my mind because they're usually getting planted in the garden either in the spring before I have a lot of plants in my garden or in the fall when things start to die and I have the space. So they don't take up space in the way that the plants that I grow during the summer do, if that makes sense, because usually with my cool weather crops, space is available. Where with my summer crops, I really have to limit what I am growing. So all cool season crops I will definitely have again. I will be planting those soon in my garden. And that's everything I can think of right now. Again, I am excluding perennials from this list because the plan is hopefully that they survive and come back next year. But those are my definitely going to grow again in my garden next year. So now let's talk about the ones that I am not going to grow again. And the list isn't that long. I think it's a good sign that this list gets smaller every year because again, it means that I am focusing more on what I truly, truly love. But let's go ahead and start with that perennial exception, which I've mentioned before already, so it's probably not a surprise, but it's my raspberry bushes. They are, I love raspberries, they taste delicious, but the bushes I have, one of which was a propagation from the other one, are both heritage raspberries. They are too big for my space 
but also because they are covered in thorns that makes it even more inconvenient i think if maybe they were that same size but thornless i'd feel differently but just trying to maneuver around them throughout my garden even though they're on wheels this year I'm kind of over it. So I am going to look for raspberry replacements. I got a ton of recommendations from you guys about compact varieties, thornless varieties. So I'll be on the hunt for those next year, but I'm definitely going to not grow the ones that I have in my garden this year. Another one that kind of surprised me because I loved it so much last year, but I just didn't really love it this year is the sweet potato vines, specifically the tricolor sweet potato vines. So the other sweet potato vines I've grown have done great. I don't love them in terms of they bring me a lot of joy when I look at them, but they grow great, low maintenance, fill out a bunch of space. But my tricolor ones just didn't really fill out the space this year. And I don't think they did last year either, but I had them uh, more closely planted to other plants. So I love the look of them, but they're just not as productive as some of the other sweet potato vines that I have. So I am not gonna do any of the tricolor sweet potato vines next year. Next on my not growing again list is a plant that I've grown for a few years, my morning glory. I think I'm gonna give up on it. I like what it does. I like again that it is a climbing plant, it grows vertically, it fills out a good amount of space but I love the Black Eyed Susan Vine more. And I think I would rather replace where I currently have Morning Glory with Black Eyed Susan Vine. So that is gonna be my plan for next year. And I will say some of the differences. So both kind of pros and cons. Why I like the Black Eyed Susan Vines better is one, I haven't had as many issues with the leaves turning yellow as I have had with these. And again, they're on pretty much the same like fertilization schedule. They are the Black Eyed Susan Vines, the leaf canopy, like I said, is much denser. So I would say the Morning Glory grows faster. So if you're looking for something that can quickly grow up a trellis, that grows faster, but it's not as dense. Whereas the Black Eyed Susan Vines, I keep pointing over there because there's one right there, that is more density, but does take a little bit longer to climb as quickly as the Morning Glory. Also, I don't know if this is just me, my Morning Glory barely flowers. I have had so many different recommendations and I've tried so many different things. So I have some in morning sun, I have some in afternoon sun. I have some that I never fertilize because I was told they like poor quality soil, but they're already in containers. I have some that I make sure to use bloom boosting fertilizer on. I don't know what it is, but they don't produce the flowers in the same way that the black eyed Susan mines do. So I think I'm going to not grow any morning glory next year. And like I said, just replace it with more of the Black Eyed Susan. I might stick to coconut appeal. I might try some different varieties. I'm not sure yet, but I think I'm gonna say goodbye to the Morning Glory. So that's actually everything on my definitely won't grow again list. It was so short that I just hopped up and did a quick run around the garden. Um, so maybe I'm forgetting one that I already pulled, but I think that's it for like the definitely not going to have. So now let's go into the maybes and help me decide what I should do. So first off is Celosia. It has done very well in my garden. It has filled out my border so nicely, but I don't know if I just love it as a plant. And this is so hard because again, it's done so well when other things that I'm growing haven't done as well. Maybe I need to try a different color. Maybe that might help because the ones that I have right now, the flowers are more of like, I don't know, like a, I don't know how to describe it, like a creamy reddish white. And I think if I had maybe something that was a bit brighter pink, I might like that more. So maybe that is what I'll do. I'll look for a different Celosia variety, but it is from Florette and they've done again, fantastic. When other plants have kind of failed, they've held that space in the garden to make it still look full. So. Let me know if there are any good pink varieties of Celosia that you know of that I should try out. My next maybe is one that I am pretty sure I'm gonna grow again. I just don't know where. And that is my status. I love status. I love harvesting the flowers, drying them, using them throughout the next year for crafts, wreaths, decorating my tree, but it doesn't fill out the garden border as well as I'd hoped. It's kind of like the opposite of the Celosia, but because it's so straight and narrow and because I am regularly harvesting, the leaves basically stay close to the soil. 
So it kind of looks like there's an empty space in the bed for a good amount of the season as I'm waiting for new flowers to grow. So I want to grow it, but I don't know where. I mean, part of me feels like definitely still mix it into a border, but maybe maybe the back, but it doesn't really get tall enough to then be shown at all. I was thinking maybe in one of my buckets, but then that is such a focal point that a lot of the time when I have it harvested, it's just gonna look like a few leaves in the bucket. So I don't know, maybe I just need to shove them even closer together in my raised beds, but that's kind of like an example of where I really do like a plant, but it just doesn't look as great in the garden as I would hope. Next on my maybe list are two that are similar. So I'm gonna throw them together. And that is zucchinis and cucumber. I love both of them. I eat them pretty frequently, but they always get some sort of pest or disease issue or disease from a pest issue that takes them out pretty early in the garden, maybe sometime in July. I think I pulled both of mine this year and I don't have space for multiple. So this would be an example where if I had like a whole row of zucchini plants or a whole row of cucumber plants and I lost a couple, it'd be okay. But I usually only have one of each. And when I have one of each and then it dies in July, I mean, yes, I can start another round, but I would prefer to use that space for something that I don't have the many issues with. Like my pepper plants are just fine and they continue to produce throughout the entire season without any issues. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do about those yet because again, I do eat them pretty frequently, like enough to grow them for myself, just the amount of issues that I have with the plants is a bit frustrating. And then another maybe are my super bells right there or my caliber koas. It's kind of a situation where I like them a lot, but I don't know if I love them. So, I mean, there they are in the bucket planter. The good part about them is that they don't trail as much as a super tunia. So they are a little bit easier to control. Oh, there's a helicopter. I always wonder, well, I mean, the planes I think are too high, but I hope like the people in the helicopters enjoy looking at my garden. Oh, I think it's a news helicopter. Hello. So yeah, the super bells are a much smaller size, which I think there is a place for it in my garden. But then I'm like, but maybe I should just fill that space with something I really, really love instead. I don't know. So that's when I go back and forth on like I like it, but I don't love it, so I don't know. So those are the ones that I'm still kind of thinking about. Um, let me know definitely any Celosias you think I should try. Let me know about the maybes, <laughs> if I should definitely try them again. And I think that's gonna be everything for this video. So I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, I love kind of reflecting as we get closer to the end of the season, what I liked, what I didn't like. And as long as I hopefully like more every year in my garden, then I feel like I am on the right path. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.